predictably irrational. Book by Dan Ariel. Detailed summary. Introduction. How an injury led me to irrationality and to the research described here. The introduction to predictably irrational describes how author Dan Ariely's experience with a severe injury led him to question the rationality of human decision making. After being burned on over 70% of his body, Ariely spent three years in the hospital undergoing painful treatments and surgeries. During this time, he observed that the doctors and nurses treating him often made irrational decisions that seemed to go against their own best interests. This experience sparked Ariely's interest in understanding the hidden forces that shape our decisions and led him to conduct a series of experiments exploring the ways in which we make choices. The introduction provides a preview of some of the key insights that Ariely will explore in the book, such as the ways in which we are influenced by social norms, the power of expectations, and the role of emotions in decision-making. Overall, the main idea of the introduction is to introduce the reader to Ariely's personal story and his interest in studying irrationality, while also previewing the key themes and concepts that will be explored in the book. Chapter 1 The Truth About Relativity Why Everything is Relative Even When It Shouldn't Be Chapter 1 Chapter 1 of Predictably Irrational explores the idea that everything is relative, even when it shouldn't be. Ariely argues that we often make decisions based on how options compare to each other, rather than on their absolute value. The chapter begins with a series of experiments that demonstrate the power of relativity in decision-making. For example, participants were asked to choose between two types of beer, a premium brand and a budget brand. When the premium brand was presented alone, most participants chose it. However, when the budget brand was added as a third option, the majority of participants chose the premium brand, even though it was more expensive than the budget brand. Ariely explains that this phenomenon occurs because we have difficulty making absolute judgments about the value of things. Instead, we rely on comparisons to make decisions. This means that the way in which options are presented can have a significant impact on our choices. The chapter also explores the concept of decoy options, which are added to a set of choices in order to influence the decision maker towards a specific option. For example, a high-priced option may be added to a set of choices in order to make a lower-priced option seem like a better value. Ariely argues that decoy options can be used to influence our decisions without us even realizing it. In addition to exploring the power of relativity in decision-making, the chapter also discusses the role of expectations. Ariely argues that our expectations can significantly influence our perceptions of value. For example, participants in one experiment were given a painkiller and told that it cost either 10 cents or $2.50 per pill. Participants who were told that the painkiller was expensive reported feeling less pain than those who were told that it was cheap, even though they were given the same pill. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 1 is that everything is relative, and that our decisions are often influenced by the way in which options are presented. The chapter provides several examples of how this phenomenon plays out in real-world decision-making and introduces the concept of decoy options and the role of expectations in decision-making. Chapter 2 The Fallacy of Supply and Demand Why the Price of Pearls and Everything Else is Up in the Air In Chapter 2 of Predictably Irrational, Aureli challenges the traditional economic model of supply and demand, arguing that it does not accurately reflect the way in which people make decisions about pricing. Ariely begins by introducing the concept of anchor pricing, which refers to the way in which people use the first piece of information they receive as a reference point for all subsequent information. In one experiment, participants were asked to write down the last two digits of their social security number, and then to bid on items that were priced according to those digits. Participants with higher social security numbers consistently bid more than those with lower numbers, even though the numbers had no actual relationship to the value of the items. Ariely argues that this phenomenon occurs because people use anchor prices as a reference point when making decisions. This means that if a seller sets a high price for an item, buyers will be more likely to pay a higher price than they would if the seller had set a lower price. The chapter also explores the role of expectations in pricing decisions. Ariely argues that people often have a fairness threshold, which influences their perceptions of what is a reasonable price. In one experiment, participants were asked to imagine that they were selling tickets to a basketball game and to set a price that they thought was fair. 
However, when they were told that other participants had set a higher price, they tended to raise their own prices in, in order to match the others. Ariely also discusses the concept of relativity in pricing, arguing that people often make decisions based on how prices compare to each other, rather than on their absolute value. For example, people may be more likely to buy a $50 shirt if it is next to a $100 shirt than if it is next to a $25 shirt. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 2 is that the traditional economic model of supply and demand does not accurately reflect the way in which people make decisions about pricing. The chapter introduces the concept of anchor pricing, the role of expectations and fairness in pricing decisions, and the influence of relativity on pricing. Ariely suggests that by understanding these hidden forces, sellers can use pricing strategies that will lead to more favorable outcomes. Chapter 3 The Cost of Zero Cost Why We Often Pay Too Much When We Pay Nothing Chapter 3 of Predictably Irrational explores the concept of zero cost and how it influences our decision making. Ariely argues that the idea of getting something for free can cloud our judgment and lead us to make irrational decisions. Ariely begins by discussing the power of free as a marketing tool. He argues that the allure of getting something for nothing can be so strong that it can lead us to make irrational decisions. For example, in one experiment, participants were given the option of receiving a Hershey's Kiss for one cent or a lint truffle for 15 cents. Most participants chose the truffle, even though it was more expensive, because they were drawn to the idea of getting something for free. The chapter also explores the concept of the sunk cost fallacy, which refers to the idea that people are often reluctant to abandon a project or investment because they have already invested time or money into it. Ariely argues that the concept of zero cost can exacerbate this fallacy, because people may be reluctant to abandon something that was free, even if it no longer serves their needs. Ariely also discusses the role of social norms in decision-making. He argues that the idea of zero cost can lead us to ignore social norms and act in ways that we might not otherwise. For example, in one experiment, participants were given a free gift in exchange for completing a survey. Some participants then stole additional items from the experimenters, even though they knew it was wrong, because they felt that they were owed something else for free. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 3 is that the concept of zero cost can influence our decision-making in irrational ways. The chapter explores the power of free as a marketing tool, the influence of the sunk cost fallacy, and the role of social norms in decision-making. Ariely suggests that by understanding the hidden forces at play, we can make more rational decisions and avoid being swayed by the allure of free. Chapter 4 The Cost of Social Norms Why We Are Happy to Do Things, But Not When We Are Paid to Do Them Chapter 4 of Predictably Irrational explores the role of social norms in our decision-making and why we are often willing to do things for free but reluctant to do the same thing for money. Ariely begins by discussing the concept of intrinsic motivation, which refers to the idea that people are motivated by internal factors such as enjoyment or a sense of purpose. He argues that when people are asked to perform a task that they find inherently interesting or rewarding, they are willing to do it for free. However, if they are offered money to do the same task, their motivation may shift from intrinsic to extrinsic, and they may become less willing to perform the task. Ariely also discusses the concept of social norms, which refer to the unwritten rules and expectations that guide our behavior in social situations. He argues that social norms can influence our behavior in powerful ways, and that violating these norms can be more costly than any financial penalty. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were asked to complete a puzzle. Some participants were offered money for completing the puzzle, while others were not. The results showed that those who were not offered money worked on the puzzle for longer and reported higher levels of enjoyment than those who were offered money. Ariely also discusses the concept of gift exchange, which refers to the idea that people feel a sense of obligation to reciprocate when someone does something nice for them. He argues that this sense of obligation can be more powerful than any financial incentive. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 4 is that social norms and intrinsic motivation play a powerful role in our decision-making. The chapter explores the concept of intrinsic motivation, social norms, and gift exchange, and provides several examples of how these concepts influence our behavior.
Ariely suggests that by understanding these hidden forces, we can make more rational decisions and create environments that foster intrinsic motivation and positive social norms. Chapter 5 The Influence of Arousal Why Hot is Much Hotter Than We Realize In Chapter 5 of Predictably Irrational, Dan Ariely explores the influence of arousal on our decision-making. He argues that when we are in a state of high arousal, we may make irrational decisions that, that we later regret. Ariely begins by discussing the concept of hot states, which refer to periods of high arousal caused by emotions such as anger, fear, or desire. He argues that when we are in a hot state, we may be more likely to act impulsively and make decisions that we would not make in a cooler state. Ariely also discusses the concept of emotional accounting, which refers to the way in which we assign different values to experiences based on our emotional state at the time. He argues that when we are in a hot state, we may assign greater value to experiences that we would not value as highly in a cooler state. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were asked to rate the attractiveness of potential partners while in a hot or cool state. The results showed that participants in the hot state rated the partners as more attractive than those in the cool state. Ariely also discusses the influence of sexual arousal on our decision-making and how it can lead to risky behavior and regret. He argues that when we are sexually aroused, we may be more likely to engage in risky sexual behavior that we later regret. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 5 is that arousal plays a powerful role in our decision-making. The chapter explores the concept of hot states, emotional accounting, and the influence of sexual arousal on our behavior. Ariely suggests that by recognizing the influence of arousal, we can make more rational decisions and avoid making choices that we may later regret. Chapter 6 The Problem of Procrastination and Self-Control Why We Can't Make Ourselves Do What We Want to Do Chapter, chapter 6 of Predictably Irrational focuses on the problem of procrastination and self-control and explores why we often fail to do what we intend to do. Ariely argues that our inability to follow through on our goals is not simply a result of laziness or lack of willpower, but rather a complex interaction of various psychological factors. Ariely begins the chapter by discussing the concept of present bias, which refers to our tendency to prioritize immediate pleasure or reward over long-term benefits. He argues that this bias can make it difficult to follow through on goals that require delayed gratification, such as saving for retirement or sticking to a diet. Ariely also discusses the concept of time inconsistency, which refers to the way in which our preferences and priorities can shift depending on the time frame in which they are considered. He argues that this inconsistency can make it difficult to make consistent choices and follow through on our goals. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were given the option of receiving a small reward immediately or a larger reward at a later time. The results showed that participants were more likely to choose the immediate reward, even if it was smaller. Ariely also explores the concept of willpower and argues that it is a finite resource that can be depleted over time. He suggests that by understanding the limits of our willpower, we can take steps to conserve it and make better use of it when we need it most. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 6 is that procrastination and self-control are complex problems that are influenced by a variety of psychological factors. Ariely suggests that by understanding these factors, we can develop strategies to overcome our tendency to procrastinate and improve our self-control. Chapter 7 The High Price of Ownership Why We Overvalue What We Have Chapter 7 of Predictably Irrational explores the concept of ownership and how it can influence our perceptions of value. Ariely argues that we often overvalue things that we own, simply because we own them. Ariely begins the chapter by discussing the endowment effect, which refers to the way in which people ascribe more value to things they own than to equivalent things they do not own. He argues that this effect can lead to irrational decision-making, such as holding onto items we no longer need or paying more than necessary for something simply because we already own it. Ariely also discusses the idea of loss aversion, which refers to our tendency to feel the pain of a loss more strongly than the pleasure of a gain. He argues that this aversion can make it difficult to let go of possessions, even when they no longer serve a purpose or have lost their value. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were given a mug and then offered the opportunity to sell it or trade it for a different item. 
The results showed that participants were more likely to demand a higher price for the mug if they owned it, compared to if they did not own it. Ariely also discusses the concept of sunk costs, which refers to the idea that people are often reluctant to abandon an investment, even if it is no longer rational to continue with it. He argues that this reluctance can lead to irrational decision-making and can be difficult to overcome. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 7 is that ownership can lead to irrational decision-making and can cause us to overvalue things that we own. Ariely suggests that by understanding these biases, we can make better decisions and avoid unnecessary costs associated with our possessions. Chapter 8 Keeping Doors Open Why Options Distract Us From Our Main Objective In Chapter 8 of Predictably Irrational, Aureli explores explores the concept of decision-making in the face of uncertainty and how the presence of multiple options can lead to decision paralysis. He argues that having too many options can be overwhelming and can lead us to make irrational decisions. Aureli begins the chapter by discussing the idea of opportunity cost, which refers to the idea that every decision we make comes at the cost of foregoing other potential options. He argues that the fear of making the wrong choice can prevent us from making any choice at all. Aureli also introduces the concept of the status quo bias, which refers to our tendency to prefer the current state of affairs over alternatives. He argues that this bias can lead us to stick with an unsatisfactory status quo rather than making a change. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were given the choice between two options, a high-quality product with a high price or a lower-quality product with a lower price. When a third option was introduced, a medium-quality product with a medium price, participants were more likely to choose the medium option, even though it was not the best value. Aureli also discusses the concept of mental accounting, which refers to the way in which people categorize and assign value to different aspects of their lives. He argues that this accounting can lead to irrational decision-making, such as overspending on a vacation because it was paid for with a bonus. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 8 is that having too many options can be overwhelming and can lead to decision paralysis. Aureli suggests that by understanding the biases that can influence decision-making in the face of uncertainty, we can make better decisions and avoid unnecessary costs associated with indecision. Chapter 9 The Effect of Expectations Why the Mind Gets What It Expects In Chapter 9 of Predictably Irrational, Aureli discusses how our our expectations can influence our perceptions and experiences, even when those expectations are unfounded or irrational. He argues that the power of expectations can be both positive and negative, and can influence a wide range of outcomes. Aureli begins the chapter by discussing the concept of the placebo effect, which refers to the way in which people can experience a positive outcome simply because they expect it. He argues that the power of expectations can be so strong that they can even override the physical effects of a drug or treatment. Aureli also discusses the concept of self-fulfilling prophecies, which refers to the way in which our expectations can shape our behavior and interactions with others. He argues that when we expect certain outcomes or behaviors from others, we can inadvertently create a situation in which those outcomes or behaviors become more likely. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were given a drink that they were told contained alcohol, even though it was actually a non-alcoholic beverage. Despite the lack of actual alcohol, participants still exhibited behaviors typically associated with drunkenness, such as increased confidence and decreased inhibitions. Aureli also discusses the concept of anchoring, which refers to the way in which our initial impressions or experiences can shape our subsequent perceptions and decisions. He argues that when we encounter a new situation or object, our first impression can set the stage for all subsequent interactions. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 9 is that our expectations can have a powerful influence on our perceptions and experiences. By understanding the ways in which expectations can shape our behavior and interactions with others, others, we can make more informed decisions and avoid being manipulated by unfounded or irrational expectations. Chapter 10 The Power of Price Why a 50-Cent Aspirin Can Do What a Penny Aspirin Can't In Chapter 10 of Predictably Irrational, Aureli discusses the power of price and how it can influence our perceptions and decisions. He argues that our understanding of value is often based on relative comparisons rather than absolute values, and that this can lead us to make irrational choices. 
Aurelie begins the chapter by discussing the concept of price anchoring, which refers to the way in which our perception of a product's value is influenced by its price. He argues that our perception of value is often relative to other similar products, and that we use price as a way to determine how much something is worth. The chapter includes several experiments that illustrate these concepts. In one experiment, participants were asked to rate the quality of a wine based on its price, even though all of the wines were actually the same. The results showed that participants rated the more expensive wine as being of higher quality, despite the fact that there was no actual difference in taste. Aureli also discusses the concept of decoy pricing, which involves adding a third option to a choice set that is designed to make the other options look more attractive. He argues that this can lead us to make irrational choices based on the way the options are presented. Finally, Aureli discusses the concept of free and how it can influence our perceptions and decisions. He argues that the idea of getting something for free can be a powerful motivator, even if the actual value of the item is low. Overall, the main idea of Chapter 10 is that our perceptions of value are often relative and influenced by the way in which products are priced and presented to us. By understanding these influ influences, we can make more informed decisions and avoid being manipulated by marketers and advertisers. Chapter 11 The Context of Our Character Part 1 Why We Are Dishonest and What We Can Do About It Chapter 11 of Predictably Irrational, The Hidden Forces That Shape Our Decisions is titled The Context of Our Character, Part 1, Why We Are Dishonest, and What We Can Do About It. In this chapter, author Dan Aureli explores the topic of dishonesty and why people sometimes behave dishonestly even when it goes against their values. Aureli begins by discussing his own experience as a burn victim in a hospital where nurses would regularly steal his pain medication. This led him to wonder about the circumstances that lead people to be dishonest, and how the context in which they make decisions can influence their behavior. The chapter then goes on to describe several experiments conducted by Aureli and his colleagues to investigate the topic of dishonesty. One experiment involved asking participants to solve a series of math problems and self-report their scores. The participants were given the opportunity to cheat by reporting higher scores in exchange for more money. The results showed that most people cheated to some extent, but the amount of cheating increased when the potential rewards were greater and when the likelihood of being caught was lower. Aureli also describes an experiment where participants were asked to recall the Ten Commandments before taking the math test. Interestingly, participants who were reminded of the Ten Commandments before the test cheated less than those who were not reminded of them. This suggests that moral reminders can help to reduce dishonesty. The chapter concludes with a discussion of the importance of creating a culture of honesty and integrity in organizations and society as a whole. Whole. Aureli argues that small changes in the context of decision-making can have a big impact on whether people behave honestly or not, and that by understanding these forces, we can design better systems and policies to encourage ethical behavior. Overall, Chapter 11 highlights the importance of understanding the context in which people make decisions, particularly when it comes to ethical behavior. It suggests that by designing better systems and policies that take into account these contextual factors, we can encourage greater honesty and integrity in our personal and professional lives. Lives. Chapter 12 The Context of Our Character, Part 2 Why Dealing with Cash Makes Us More Honest. Chapter 12 of Predictably Irrational, The Hidden Forces That Shape Our Decisions by Dan Aureli explores the idea of how cash transactions can influence our honesty. Aureli argues that people are more likely to cheat or behave dishonestly when they are removed from cash transactions and instead deal with abstract forms of payment like credit cards or online transactions. He suggests that this is because we are less connected to the consequences of our actions when we use non-cash forms of payment, and we are more likely to justify our dishonest behavior. To explore this idea, Aureli and his team conducted several experiments. In one experiment, they set up a lemonade stand and allowed customers to pay either with cash or by using a credit card. They found that customers who paid with cash were less likely to steal money from the stand, whereas those who paid with a credit card were more likely to steal money or cheat in other ways. In another experiment, participants were asked to solve a set of math problems and were given the opportunity to report their own scores and receive pay payment based on those scores. Some participants were told they would receive payment in cash, while others were told they would receive payment via PayPal. 
The researchers found that those who were promised cash were more honest in reporting their scores than those who were promised payment via PayPal. Ariely suggests that the physical act of handling cash makes us more aware of the consequences of our actions, which in turn makes us more likely to behave honestly. He also suggests that using non-cash forms of payment can make us more likely to justify our dishonest behavior, because we are less connected to the consequences of our actions. Overall, this chapter highlights the importance of understanding the role that context and payment methods can play in influencing our behavior and decision-making processes. By recognizing these biases, we can take steps to mitigate their effects and make more rational decisions. Chapter 13 Beer and Free Lunches What is Behavioral Economics and Where Are the Free Lunches? In Chapter 13, Dan Ariely reflects on the evolution of behavioral economics and his own journey in the field. He begins by discussing the challenges faced by traditional economics in accurately predicting human behavior, as it is often based on the assumption that people are perfectly rational decision makers. Behavioral economics, on the other hand, recognizes that humans are often irrational and prone to systematic biases. Ariely explains that this field has emerged to study these biases and their impact on economic decision making. Ariely then goes on to discuss some of the key concepts and experiments that have been conducted in the field of behavioral economics, including the ultimatum game, the dictator game, and the trust game. He explains that these experiments have helped to shed light on the complexities of human decision-making, particularly when it comes to issues of fairness, trust, and reciprocity. One of the most important applications of behavioral economics, according to Ariely, is in the design of public policy. By understanding how people actually behave, policymakers can design interventions that are more likely to achieve their intended goals. Ariely provides several examples of how this has been done, such as by using social norms to encourage people to pay their taxes or by framing messages in a way that resonates with people's values. Ariely concludes the chapter by reflecting on the potential impact of behavioral economics on society. He argues that by recognizing and addressing our irrational tendencies, we can make better decisions both as individuals and as a society. However, he cautions that this will require a shift in how we think about ourselves and our decision-making processes, as well as a willingness to experiment and try new approaches to solving problems.